Hello everyone, I'm Nicolas Zohar and I will talk about the work done with Jean-Charles Régin on the parallelization of the TSP solving in CP. The traveling salesman problem has for data a list of cities and the distance between each pair of cities. This problem is constrained by two constraints. The first is to visit each city only once. The second is to find the shortest cycle. We propose to solve the TSP in parallel with embarrassingly parallel search or EPS. It decomposes the initial problem into P independent and equivalent subproblem. Then it solves them in parallel. In order to obtain P subproblems, it generates the search tree in brief with an assignment limit. It iteratively increases the limit until the required number of subproblems is obtained. In the example, it's trying to obtain P equal 4 subproblems. The assignment limit is defined by the maximum number of left branches from a node to the root. It is first set to 2 and generates 3 subproblems. Since it wants more than 3, it increases the limit to 4 and gets 5, which is greater than P. The decomposition step is over. The search strategy used for solving the TSP, named LC first, selects one node from the graph according to a heuristic and keeps branching around the node until there are no more candidates around it, no matter if you backtrack or not. Let's take an example. Here, we set the assignment limit to 2 and obtain the subproblem represented by the blue search node. To do so, it branch AB and AC with A as LC node. The gray part represents the sequential execution that is without assignment limit. As there are no more neighbors in A after the branching of AC, the search strategy selects D and branch around it in the world gray area. Thus, to determine the LC node of the yellow part, we must know the previous one, which is A if we do a decomposition, D if we do a sequential execution. We can observe that the LC first is depth based while the decomposition of EPS is breadth based in the paper, we experimentally show that the combination of lc and NPS at decomposition can give very bad results. To tackle this issue, we introduce bound backtrack and dive. It performs sequential solving with a bounded number of backtrack before doing the EPS decomposition. During the preprocessing, we set an importance of each LC node selected. Instead of selecting LC node with LC first while decomposing, we take the most important node having neighbors as LC node. This allows us to get almost a linear gain on the number of workers and often to considerably reduce the overall number of backtrack. To conclude, the integration of a learning strategy with EPS is not straightforward. Our algorithm allows us to obtain good results and robustness. In the future, we would like to study the difference between the generated subproblems and focus on the load balancing problem for the TSP. Hello everyone, I'm Nicolas Zohar and I will talk about the work done with Jean-Charles Régin on the parallelization of the TSP solving in CIP. This work was done at the I3S, a French laboratory in the University Côte d'Azur. First, I will define what the traveling salesman problem is and how it is modeled in CIP. As our goal is to parallelize the solving of the TSP, we propose to use EPS and I will explain how it works. Next. I will show you why the combination of LC first and EPS is not straightforward and how to combine them. Finally, I will show you some experiments and I will conclude. The traveling salesman problem is NP hard or NP complete. It depends on the variance. It offers data, a list of cities, and the distance between each pair of cities. This problem is constrained with two constraints. The first is to visit each city only once. The second is to find the shortest cycle. The TSP is a fundamental problem in computer science motivated by many applications in the industry. Here, on the left, we can see the map of the USA and the solution of the TSP going through each red city by blue edges. When we try to solve an NP-complete or NP-hard problem, the usual method is to relax the initial problem by removing a constraint. For the TSP and CP, we use a Lagrangian relaxation. It consists to solve a succession of the relaxed problem and derive it until we obtain an optimal solution to the initial problem. There is two well-known relaxation for the TSP. The first is the minimum cost assignment. We remove the connexity constraint. It creates many cycles as lower bound. The second is the degree relaxation. 
we remove the degree constraint, so it's no longer mandatory to have exactly two neighbors. It is generally modeled by a special minimum spanning tree. The CP uses this last Lagrangian relaxation based on the Lagrangian Carp one tree Lagrangian relaxation, which derives a special minimum spanning tree called a one tree. It is a minimum spanning tree plus one minimum edge. The one tree is very useful because it introduces the idea of cycle in the minimum spanning tree and remains the lower bound to the optimal solution of the initial problem. This kind of solving methods are theoretically very nice but not efficient in practice. As we can see in the figure, the objective value grows in a non-monotonic way and the convergence can be very slow. However, it takes a short amount of time to be close to the optimal value. So, to tackle the issue of slow convergence, the CP proposes to filter some value of some variables that are known to be inconsistent. In practice, it leads to a huge improvement. Now, I'll give you a short introduction to the filtering algorithms of the weighted circuit constraints. That is a constraint used for modeling the TSP in CP. Take a graph, like the left one on the slide. Make the hypothesis that we know the length k of a metonite cycle in the graph. So k is an upper bound for the TSP. Now, with some algorithms that I will not explain here, we can remove edges present preventing the existence of a Hamiltonian cycle lower or equal than k and identify mandatory edges for the existence of a Hamiltonian cycle lower or equal than k. It allows us to take the left graph, apply this process with those filtering algorithms and obtain the right graph. Thus, the third space will be considerably shrinked. In practice, it is easy to obtain such a k, for example, with some heuristics for the TSP, like LKH, that are very, very fast. Another constraint that we have introduced last year in CP19 is the k-cut set propagator. It is used in combination of the weighted circuit constraints. It simply states that in every cut set of the graph, there must be an even number of mandatory edges. A cut set is a set of mandatory edges that disconnect the graph if we remove them and there is no subset disconnecting it. The algorithm focuses on the cut set of size 2 and 3, because increasing the size also increases the complexity of the algorithm. Every cut set of size 2 can be found with the thin algorithm. It performs a special DFS. For the cut set of size 3, let's take an example. The blue edges are the mandatories. On the left graph, imagine the store starts in the bottom of the graph. Take the blue edge C. Now, we are in the top of the graph. We have two choices. Either we go through A or B. There is no deduction to do. Now, imagine A is also blue. So we start from the bottom, we go through C, we are on the top, we go through A, because now we said A is blue, we are on the bottom. Now, if we also take B, we go on the top of the graph and we are stuck because there is no other distinct path to go back to the start. It means that B can be deleted if A was blue. With the same logic, if the three edges are blue, it means that we must find a solution going through those edges. There is no solution because there is an odd number of mandatory edges. So we raise a fail. When the filtering algorithms are done, a branching bound is performed by selecting edges no longer mandatory and branching on them. This example is from the TSP lib, a reference graph library for testing the TSP solving algorithm. Blue edges are the mandatories, orange edges are the one tree, the dark ones are the remaining edges no longer filtered. Now, I will show you how the search strategy is designed in order to obtain good results. At each search node, we want the algorithm named LC first to select an edge. At the beginning, no edge was previously selected. So, by a given heuristic, we select an edge in the optional edge of the graph. From this edge, we keep one extremity. We call this extremity the LC node. For the next stage selection, we select an edge around the LC node, not in the whole graph. 
when there is no more candidate on the NC node, we select another edge in the whole graph and set an extremity as the LC node. We note that the LC node is backtracked. It means that no matter if we fail or not, we keep the value of the LC node as the previous LC node. Let's see an example. This tree represents a search tree of an execution with LC first, where the left branches are applies and the right branches are refutations. For each decision, there is a couple LC node semicolon the branching edge. It allows to see the evolution of the LC node while solving. First, it selects A, B and keep A as the LC node. Next, it selects A, C and keep A still as the LC node. Now, there is no more candidate around A, so it selects D, E and keep now D as the LC node. It fails and so it does the refutation, so not D, E and keep D as the LC node. It backtracks, so it does the refutation of A, C and still keep D as the LC node, so the next decision would be around D. Now we, he selects D, F and keep D, there is no more candidate around D, so it selects A, E and keep E as the, the LC node. No, it fails, so it do the refutation, it backtracks and backtracks, and it go here to the first refutation and still have E from here as the LC node. So it do the first refutation and go in depth around E. Past decisions will influence future decisions. We note that the LC first algorithm is depth based. It means that it is mandatory to reach lifts before each backtrack. Embarrassingly Parallel Search, or EPS, is a method developed by Regin et al. It allows to split the search tree in distinct subproblems and solve them in parallel with a given number of workers. First, we split the problem into P subproblems consistent with the propagation such that P is greater or equal to the number of workers and we push them into a queue. Next, each worker dynamically takes a problem and solves it. Then, a master monitors the concurrent access to the queue. The solving is finished when all the problems are solved and the master manages the value of the objective function. EPS is very useful because instead of checking if a worker is done, the worker send a message to the master to notify it. Then the master gives to him a new subproblem. The idea is based on the fact that the problem is cut in independent and equivalent subproblems. It means that the only communication are the task sending. A very important remark is that the parallel solving must not perform solving steps that are not done sequentially. It means that the search strategy must select the same couples of variables and values. For the next part, I will explain how the decomposition into P subproblems works with EPS. Let's say we want four subproblems. First of all, we set an assignment limit. In the example, it is initially set to 2. Then, we will get all the nodes of the search tree which are composed of exactly two assignments as subproblems. In the example, this corresponds to the black square. As soon as the black square is reached, we force the backtrack. After this step, if there are more than four subproblems, then the process is stopped. Otherwise, we start again by increasing the assignment limit. In the example, we have increased it to 4. This corresponds to the orange square. So we get 5 subproblems and the process is stopped. It is important to notice that the EPS decomposition works in breast. We showed that LC first needs to go in depth and solve the left branches before doing the right branches to bring up LC nodes. We showed that EPS decomposition needs to remain shallow and solve the nodes of the search tree in breath in order to generate subproblems. For example, in the figure with an assignment limit of 2, we will reach the blue node with the LC node A if we do a decomposition step. 
will not consider the gray part of the search tree and go directly to the refutation of AC. We will have A as LC node. If we do a sequential execution, we will consider the gray part and get D as LC node. Thus, the decomposition can bring up LC nodes that will not have been broken up with sequential execution. As I said before, it is not good to do things in parallel that we will not have done sequentially. Here, it is by giving importance to nodes that don't have any. Thus, disrupting the efficiency of LC first by generating sub-problems with a higher combinatorics. Thus, we introduce bound backtrack and dive algorithm, which is a diving algorithm. It is composed of three steps. First, we do a pre-processing. It consists in solving the problem sequentially with a limited number of backtracks. When there is a backtrack, we associate an importance to the current LC node in gamma, an order set of all the nodes of the graph. The second step is the decomposition step of EPS. Instead of using the LC node given by the LC first algorithm, we use the nodes being the most important in gamma and we branch around these nodes. This third step restores the classical LC first algorithm and solves each problem in parallel. It is therefore crucial to define the concept of importance of an LC node. The idea used here is the following. The more a fail occurs at a shallow depth, the more the LC node selected at that time has a strong impact over the search strategy. Thus, we define for each node i, gamma i equals the old value of gamma i plus a big constant over the current depth squared. We use a nonlinear denominator in order to give much more importance to shallow fails. Thus, gamma allows to define an order on the importance of the LC nodes. I will now quickly introduce some experiments. For each of the parallel executions, we used four workers. The sequential column represents the solving in a sequential way. The EPS no dive LC deck column represents EPS combined with LC first without making any modification. The EPS no dive no LC deck column represents EPS without LC first at the decomposition. For each of the columns, a ratio EPS over sequential is given. If we look at the mean times, we notice that EPS with or without LC first allows to improve the results in most cases. However, some instances are longer to solve in parallel than sequentially. While using four workers, the issue is that the total number of backtracks performed with EPS can be much higher than the number of backtracks performed sequentially. Thus, the naive use of EPS and LC first does not provide the robust results. On this slide, the BBD column represents the use of our bound backtrack and dive algorithm. We notice that the mean gain with four workers is greater than 5.4 in time and 2.3 in backtracks compared to the sequential execution. The naive application only gets a gain greater than 1.9 in time and 0.8 in backtracks. If we look at the ratios instance by instance, we notice that the use of BBD also improves the solving time of each instance. BBD allows to make the decomposition stable no matter how many sub-problems per worker are request. Here, we notice that the time on the average number of backtrack is quite similar regardless of the number of sub-problems per worker. In EPS, it is established that more than 30 sub-problems per worker are needed to have a correct load balancing. Here, we are taking up to 4 times 100 per workers. This generates 1600 sub-problems because there are 4 workers. We can therefore give 50 sub-problems per worker with 32 workers and observe similar results in terms of robustness. To conclude, EPS decomposition is breath-based whereas LC first is depth-based search strategy. It was then necessary to adapt the learning search strategy with EPS which does not allow time to learn. The use of our algorithm showed an improvement on the number of backtrack and robustness in the results. For future works, we would like to study the load balancing problem in the TSP, because in practice the TSP sub-problems are extremely heterogeneous, and try to have a better understanding on the improvement of the number of backtracks. 
Well, that's the end. Thank you for listening.